I have to change. And what is that change? To become more human. Not just to be a success, to become more human. For a man to become a man, he has to be at ease with his body. That body is fragile, like all bodies. We are born in weakness, the little child. We will die in weakness. And when we get to a certain age, 90, we begin to get weaker. We forget what I wanted to say. I forget words. I have more fragility. I have to stay in bed after lunch. I have to go for a walk because if I don't walk, they say if you don't use them, you lose them. So I have to accept that, that I'm 90. I'm not 50 or 40 or 30. I can't do all I would have liked to have done, but somewhere discover it's just good to be myself today. See, men have difficulty expressing their emotions. Uh, the biggest difficulty with men is when they're upset, they get quickly angry, and angry can very quickly become violent. If I have periods of loneliness or feelings of not success, men can very quickly compensate with a little bit more alcohol, a little bit of drug, because reality is difficult. So men have difficulty with reality. The men are wonderful in the ideology and in the ideology of normality. So they can cut themselves away from reality. And to be human is to love reality. They have very quickly capacity to judge because the need to win is much deeper. Now I'm not saying that women don't need to be successful, but there's this inclination in the men. It's about power. It's about success and a great fear, a much greater fear of being not a success. And so fear of sickness, fear of weakness, fear of not being a success because somewhere there's the equation, I will be loved if I'm a success. But they have to discover you are beautiful as you are. You see, love is linked to weakness. Frequently men don't see the tyranny of normality, whereas the wife, the woman, has a greater intelligence and sees things, but the man can be taken up. And then here is one of the big problems of men. Has he married his success in work, or has he married his wife? What is the most important? Is it to go up the ladder of promotion? You see, I've been just been given a new raise in pay. I'll have to travel more, but, but doesn't always take the time to say to them, how are you? What do you need? He has to love his wife different. Her affectivity, her sexuality, her all this is different to accept people as they are. So we're in a world where ideas are floating around and where we're being more controlled by television and internet and more controlled by telephone. Like I had some five young people here and they all had their 
iPhone in their pocket. And I said, you are people of communication. Are you people of presence? Are you able to listen? Are you able to be with? So this whole vision, which is all the new technologies, which are super, but like all technology, it can drive you away into the extraordinary and the interiority, the reflection, presence to people, uh, that is diminished. To be human is know, to know how to relate. And to relate is tell me your story. And I'll tell you a story of a leader in Australia who used to work with people in prostitution to help them to rise out of prostitution. And one day she was in the park of Sydney and there was a young man dying of an overdose. And his last words were, you've always wanted to change me. You never wanted to meet me. Because to meet is to listen. Tell me your story. Tell me where your pain is. Tell me where your heart is. What are the things you desire? So somebody human is somebody who knows how to meet people, how to work with people, how to love people, how to see that you have gifts that I have not. I have gifts, yes, obviously I have gifts. I have a knowledge, I have experience, I've got 90 years of experience, but you too, you have experiences, you have difference, you're different. So I need to listen to you. Because your story is different to my story. Because you are you, and I am I. You are precious. You have your ideas, political, religious, non-religious. You have your vision for the world, or just your vision for yourself. But there's myself. My education. Why is it I suddenly get angry so quickly because somebody contradicts me? So we have a temperament. We have even something deeper than that, which is an, icon, an unconscious. So when I say the need to become more humble, more listening, you must read about my own story. This first years of the child mark us. So I have to get to understand my temperament. Could help me to understand why you are always talking, whereas I keep quiet. Why do others always running away into their heads, but they're not too quickly connected to reality. They like to think about things rather than touch reality. This is not just something we control by our willpower. There's an unconscious, an unconscious that we have to get to know about. We have to discover where our fears are, what are our greatest fears, because that is the fundamental problem. See, maybe in your story, there's a story about fear. So we are caught up in the tyranny of culture, which is my culture, my group, my religion, my political party, my this, my that, because that gives me security. But to be human is to become free, free to be myself, free to become a member of humanity. I'll tell you a story when I was in Chile, and I was welcomed at the airport by Duny to driving me Santiago and on the way he slowed down and he said on the left all the rich houses defended and protected by police and military on the other side the slum areas and then he said nobody crosses this road 
everybody's right. So the big thing about being human is to meet people. To meet people who are different. And that isn't just big ideas. The big thing is always experience. People need to live an experience, not to live ideas. Like to go from the rich area to the poor area in that city. You need to meet people and discover that the other person is beautiful. So how to create meetings? That is the big question. You see, we are different, very different from birds and dogs. There is a tendency today that human beings are very like animals, and of course they are. But animals are very different. We human beings, we're not just caught up in to eat and have babies. There's something else. There's a sort of cry of the infinite within us. We're not satisfied with the finite. We want to break down the walls of the prisons. I'd call it the quest for the spiritual, the quest for the infinite. Everybody's wanting that when they're sitting on the top of a mountain contemplating the hold with the, the sea, the sun, contemplating the flowers, contemplating where does it all come from. The universe began and the universe ended. And where did it, why did it begin? And where will it end? I had the fortune to when I had a desire which was at the age of 13 to join the Navy in the middle of the war. It was danger. But my father listened and he said, if this is what you want, you must do it. He must have sensed it wasn't just a floating desire in me. It was a real desire. And it's what I would call today the inner voice. Where is your greatest desire? I'm not the one who's the king of the world, and I'm certainly not God. I'm just somebody who was born 90 years ago and will die in a few years' time, and then everybody will have forgotten me. So this is reality. We're all here, but we are just local people, passengers in a journey. We get into the train, we get out of the train, the train goes on. Humanity has been going on for millions of years. And here we are today in whatever it is, 2000 and something. And the world will continue, but I'm no longer there.